May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So where is God in all of this? Where do we find God in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic? We know God is there, we know God is here, God is with us. But I have to admit that I have found it hard to pray these past couple of weeks as the reality and the magnitude of this has begun to hit. We have just been through a week like no other. It seems far longer than a week ago that I was watching the cathedral service and Sarah Galeski preaching. Our world is completely changed. And the fact that I'm sitting here and not in the parish church of St Margaret of Antioch in Leyston is one small example of the change. And apart from a walk in Christchurch Park yesterday, I've not been out of the house for a week. And I'm sure we all have very similar experiences. So praying has been hard. Not intercessory prayer, but the prayer when you are just being in God's presence. That has been hard for me. So much is going on in our minds and our feelings, certainly in mine. The dramatic and traumatic surge of the disease across the world. The sense of loss we're feeling, of so much that has been familiar and routine. And for all the things that we were expecting to do in these months ahead. And the lack of contact, of physical contact and our realisation that people we know, even ourselves, will get sick. Where are you, Lord, when we need you? This seems so big. Why are you not making your presence felt among us? If you had been here, Lord, my brother would not have died. Martha's rebuke to our Lord is surely ours. Where are you? This morning's Gospel reading has been an immense help to me as I ask that question. It is not only right in the middle of John's Gospel, the pivotal story, but it is, for me it seems, to contain the whole of the good news. If we only had this one story, I believe we would have enough, even for times such as these. Lazarus has died, and Mary and Martha are sitting at home waiting. They cannot believe that this has happened. It has come so quickly, so suddenly, and turned their lives inside out. Just a couple of weeks ago, everything was fine. They sent word to Jesus to get him to come when Lazarus got really sick. But Jesus didn't come, and they are waiting just as we find ourselves waiting and wondering now, waiting in grief at who and what is lost, waiting in fear of the future. What Mary and Martha don't know yet is that Jesus has actually decided to delay coming, delaying by two days. <clears throat> now, this was not some unkind act on Jesus' part to ensure that Lazarus was dead, we just have to do the maths to realise that. When Jesus did eventually arrive, we learn that Lazarus has already been in the tomb four days. So if Jesus had set out right away, Lazarus would still have been dead two days. But Jesus did delay. He did make them wait, just as we may feel ourselves waiting now for his presence. My own experience throughout my life is that God seems pretty much always to make me wait. Somehow my sense of urgency and what needs to be sorted right away does not correspond with God's sense of when things need to happen. So we wait. And we wait with Martha and Mary. We are waiting for a word, for a sign. Where are you, Lord? And then the word comes. He's not yet arrived. He's drawn close to the edge of the village. 
but we've heard he has drawn close. And we have to make a step in order to meet him. He is calling. Martha is the first to respond. She goes quickly to meet him. Martha, we learned from Luke's gospel in the story of Jesus visiting the family in Bethany, Mary sitting at his feet, Martha doing all the cooking and the housework, and she being, I think we might say, rather unfairly rebuked by Jesus for fussing about what was not important right then. John's account of the sisters is a bit more balanced, but Martha is definitely the active one. She has heard that the Lord is nearby and she has responded to the call. She is off. Who is Martha, this active, hard-working first responder? The one who first hears Jesus' call. She's the first to sign up to be an NHS volunteer. She's the supermarket checkout clerk. She's the shelf stacker. She's the delivery van driver, the volunteer delivering food to those who have self-isolated. She's the teacher learning remote teaching. She's the nurse on the front line. She's the doctor in the thick of it. She's indeed the priest reaching out over the phone to give comfort to the sick and to the bereaved. She is in fact right now our political and medical leaders taking the tough decisions to help us. Martha is all those people who have heard the cry of the sick and in that cry heard the call of Jesus to compassionate and decisive action. It doesn't matter whether they name him or not. What matters is that they, like Martha, have acted. Where is God? God is in all those people who are helping the sick and helping all of us to make our way through these difficult days. And then Martha gets word to Mary that the Lord is calling her. Who is Mary in this? She's the devout, the reflective, the thoughtful one. She's the one who sat at Jesus' feet, who now is called by him through her sister, and she falls again when she gets there, at his feet, and utters the same cry as her sister. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. And she is crying as she speaks, and Jesus himself is moved to tears. Why does Jesus weep with her? What has he heard in her crying? Has he heard the pain of losing a brother and the regrets that Mary has, the regrets we all have when a loved one dies? I only wish, if only. And she is crying because in her loss she is also seeing what is truly important. Perhaps she, not only her sister, perhaps she also has been too distracted at times by her inner reflective life that she realises now once in a while has turned into self-absorption. She sees now just how deeply important her family is to her. She is seeing what is most important for her life. And what are we noticing now? Despite the disease's effect of keeping us apart, we are finding new ways to connect. We're finding we need to find new ways to connect. We matter to each other and we matter to each other across the globe. We are noticing that people are indeed paying more attention to their families, to their friends, reaching out. People are realising they can cope with a lot less. And they're asking questions. What really matters for our lives? What really matters for our life together? Jesus' call to Mary has brought this to the fore. And in her crying and in Jesus' crying for her is the dawning recognition of what life is really about. Jesus has come very close to Mary 
And we, as we ask these same questions, Jesus is very close to us. Jesus is in our response of active compassion. Jesus is also in our questions about what really matters for our lives. And then to the tomb and to calling Lazarus. Lazarus is well and truly dead, bound in strips of cloth, a stone rolled in front of the tomb. The stone is rolled away and Jesus calls him, calls him out, releasing him from death and the bonds of death. And in the midst of all we are facing, I can now hear him calling, calling us out of the crash, crushing and deadening bonds that have dragged us away from what really matters, that drag us and our world into unkindness and injustice, to greed and manipulation, to ignoring the plight of the poor and the plight of creation. These are deadly forces, and in the midst of this crisis, I believe I can now hear our Lord calling us out of them. Where is God? Where is the Lord in this? I know him now in the call and the responses of all those active on the front line combating this disease and its effects on us. I know him now in the questions he is leading us to ask about what life is really about, what really matters. And I know him now in that fainter call through the depths of the tomb and the cloths that bind us. I hear that call to turn away from all that deadens ours and humanity's life. In the centre of this gospel reading, itself the centre of John's gospel, Jesus declares to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. This is all we need to believe, all we need to know in our hearts. And gently and persistently, through all we face now and will increasingly face in the weeks ahead, Jesus is saying to us, I am the resurrection and the life, and I am always with you.